No one in history has traveled farther in 24 hours under their own power than Greg. In July of 2006, Greg made history by pedaling his human-powered vehicle an incredible 650 miles in just one day, setting a new world record. I am wedged into a capsule that fits my entire body so tightly. My shoulders and my elbows are bleeding from constantly rubbing on the sides of the carbon fiber capsule shell. I've got no room to move any part of my body in there except my lips to suck liquid food and water out of a tube, my hands to operate a steering bar a couple of inches each way, and of course my legs because I was pedaling very, very hard. Since I can't get out of my capsule, I have to pee into a tube fixed to me by catheter. <laughs> I'm drinking liquid food and water out of one tube, right, and just praying that my pit crew hasn't somehow mixed up those tubes in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a mess of tubes inside that thing. When I got the bike of my dreams, it was a CCM Mustang three-speed. <laughs> who remembers? Who had one of those bikes? <laughs> yeah. Man, I love that bike. Had the three-speed stick shift. I got going again, back up to my speed. After another 10 minutes, the handlebars snap into right into my hands. That <laughs> Right, so there I was barreling down the track at about 35 miles an hour with this useless piece of carbon fiber in my hands. And at first I was thinking, no way, this, this can't be happening to me. I mean, Ashton Kutcher, am I being punked here? Are you going to run out of the bush or something? And, and then I remember thinking, oh, wait a second, I'm going down and this is going to hurt. And I did, and it did. <laughs> well, I did win that day. I actually passed the world record at 23 hours. And by the time the atomic clock that we were using to time the event finally ticked over to 24 hours, I had set my first world record. After Greg conquered land by human power, he set his sights on the water. In June of 2007, Greg got into the Guinness Book of World Records for the second time by pedaling his custom-made human-powered boat an incredible 108 miles in 24 hours. <laughs> After the first hour, we were into five-foot seas. And I was starting to get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> After the second hour, we were into 10-foot seas. By the fourth hour, I was 15 miles out into the Pacific Ocean. I was into 15-foot waves. What was I thinking? Imagine that. Do you know what a 15-foot wave looks like? These advancing mountains of water, the height of this wall here, would come rolling toward me, completely block out the view out of my window, send me up in the sky like an elevator here in North America and many places of the world now of always trying to do more with more, bigger cars, faster cars, more consumption, more, more, more. And you know what? In this challenging economic environment, isn't adopting the attitude of trying to do more with less going to be a fundamental survival tactic for a lot of companies? The result, in the end, was probably that Critical Power 2 was the fastest pedal-powered boat on the planet. But the verdict, unfortunately, was the same, that I would need to increase my effort level by about 15% to beat Carter's kayak. And that seemed impossible. So what did I do? I went for it, of course. It was going to be the toughest 24-hour record attempt I had ever attempted. And I was going to have to go all out from the start to the finish. There was no other way. 
This was going to be an ultra marathon at sprint speed. I crossed that start line at an intensity that was unthinkable and I hung on for dear life. Shortly after the start, Helen contacted me by radio and she said, Greg, slow down. You are going out way too fast. You are never going to be able to hold on to that pace. And I said, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. With a bit less than 20 minutes to spare, I actually surpassed Carter's kayak record. And by the end of the 24 hours, I had my second world record of 152.3 miles, a mere 2.3 miles over Carter's kayak. But I had done it. It was sometime in the middle of the night during the water record attempt on Whitefish Lake in Montana a few months ago that I realized exactly why it is that I do the crazy things that I do. I was in the middle of the lake and I was hammering away on my pedals and I was fighting my fatigue and I was breathing hard and listening to music on my iPod and I turned the lights off on my boat. Now this was long after the sun had set and the moon was still hidden behind a mountain so it was very 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 dark out and the water was just sparkling and the stars were like a million jewels shining in the sky. Absolutely surreal. Like, it was amazing. When was the last time you stayed up all night long just to watch the stars? And then, right in front of my eyes, I saw two massive meteorites blaze right across the night sky. We're talking full on fireballs here that left smoke trails and everything. It was absolutely spectacular. I couldn't believe it. At that moment, I could have cared less about breaking Carter's record. And I knew, I knew that this was what it was all about. You know, the world and our lives are full of amazing possibilities and most of us experience so little of it. When you step out there and you bite off more than you can chew, your boldness exposes you to this hidden magical part of life and this hidden magical part of you too. And I think that this was the magic that Goethe was talking about. Life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the number of moments that take our breath away. When your destination is bold, your journey will be epic. Thank you very much.